Hello to all of my geeks and welcome to this bonus video slash bonus podcast uh, for this week. I just felt really compelled to uh, be discussing this and that is the Han Solo story that Disney wants you to forget about. Welcome to the channel everyone. This is the place where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. If you're watching this as a video, please go and check out our podcast. And if you're listening to this as a podcast, try out the YouTube channel. Would love to hear you, hear from you and would love to see you. Now, uh, we post, we've been posting weekly uh, on the podcast as well as, uh, as the YouTube channel. Uh, but this week, uh, I felt I wanted to do a bonus video because of course, I love you all so much. Uh, and the previous video that I posted on uh, why I abandoned the High Republic, I feel kind of goes hand in hand with uh, with this topic. Uh, if you haven't listened to the High Republic episode or, or watched the uh, High Republic episode, I strongly recommend uh, that you do because it's going to kind of explain where I'm at now. So just to kind of recap... Uh, what we talked about in the previous episode. Uh, I was reading the High Republic, which was is the new Star Wars publishing uh, initiative. Well, it's not really new. It's it's just an it's an ongoing publishing initiative uh, that launched about two years ago now. And I'm turned off. I just don't like it. Go watch the video or listen to the other podcast to find out why. So Dante D, me. Uh, I decided to abandon the high abandon the High Republic book that I was reading and go to revisit the Legends, the Star Wars Legends now, and specifically the Paradise Snare by A. C. Crispin, uh, and this is a Legends book, and it's the f the first book in the Han Solo trilogy uh, that started publication in uh, in 1997. There are three books in the uh, original Han Solo adventures. Now, this is not a, a video that is trying to say that, you know, Legends books are better than canon books because heavens knows there are some really bad Legends books uh, and there's some really good canon books, but there are also some really bad canon books and some really good Legends books. At the same time, right? Uh, this definitely is a great uh, Legends book, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. After leaving uh, the High Republic behind and jumping into this, uh, I it was like a breath breath of fresh air. Finished it in about a week, and uh, I loved every second. If I could, if I had the time to read read this cover to cover, I probably uh, would have. But you know, I have a family kids, wife, work, <laughs> I'm telling you this, having to work for a living thing is overrated, <laughs> but, uh, why this book? Why did I jump in to the paradise snare? The ha the first book in the Han Solo trilogy. I wanted to feel star Wars again. <laughs> I, w I wanted to get that, um, that warm feeling that I got watching Star Wars and reading Star Wars as a kid again. And I felt that this book might've been able to um, measure up to the task. And it's especially important at this time of year, as we're approaching the, the holiday season, actually we are in the holiday season, technically we're just two weeks away from Christmas. Uh, at, uh, at the time this video is being recording, re, re, uh, being recorded, it's especially important for me because for me, uh, I get Star Wars fever around the holidays. Don't know why. Uh, the best way I can kind of explain it is growing up, I remember my first exposure to Star Wars was, of course, the original trilogy, and my parents uh, got me the... Star Wars Trilogy Special Edition on VHS uh, when it came out this this one Christmas. I think it was like Christmas 
was it 1997 when the special edition came out? I remember it was like this huge, huge thing. Uh, I think they were re-released in theaters and then they hit VHS and they did all these, these uh, releases. Um, and the special edition, I actually, believe it or not, I've never seen the original cut for uh, Star Wars. I've never seen the original cut for Empire or, or Jedi either. Uh, I've only seen the, uh, the special editions. And I know um, the special edition of A New Hope is especially notorious uh, for having Greedo shoot first. <laughs> Uh, I know that was a, something that fans made a huge deal out of, like, because in the first and in, in the original cut, apparently you never know, you never knew who, who shot first. Uh, you know, there was, they were always theorizing about that, but it's pretty clear in the special edition that Greedo shot first. But anyway, uh, so I got, I got, uh, I got the, the special edition and I'm telling you with Star Wars, uh, I think when I got those VHS tapes, I watched Star Wars like the whole trilogy at least once a week until I, I don't know, until I hit high school maybe. And then even when I was in high school, I probably watched it every so often. And basically Star Wars was, was a big part of my life when, uh, when I was growing up and, uh, and every Christmas following, I remember getting something Star Wars related, whether, whether it was Star Wars toys or, uh, you know, books or whatever. I remember just always getting something Star Wars related for Christmas. And now as an adult, there's always something Star Wars, uh, <laughs> something huge related to Star Wars. That's, that's released around Christmas time. Right. So, uh, I think every single one of the, not that I liked the sequel trilogy, but every single installment of the sequel trilogy came out around the, the holiday season. Uh, we had the Mandalorian, which launched around the holiday season. Uh, we have the book of Boba Fett that's coming out very soon, launching during the holiday season. Uh, so, you know, I know people want to attribute May the 4th to being, you know, Star Wars Day, but I really think... It's the holiday season that is best for Star Wars. But essentially, that's a topic for another video. And I got my Star Wars fix with, with the Paradise Snare. Uh, I've seen the Han Solo movie. And to be honest, I enjoyed it. I know a lot of people didn't like it. And I think they were coming... Uh, I think on Disney's part, it was a bad idea to release uh, the Han Solo film after The Last Jedi uh, because there were a lot of fans that just started boycotting everything uh, Star Wars related after The Last Jedi for how much they, they couldn't stand it. But I actually watched the Han Solo movie. I enjoyed it. I thought it was really well done. But after reading this, I can say... The, uh, the original Star Wars story from Legends is so much better. It's great. Still like the Han Solo movie, but this was just riveting. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it. Like A plus for sure for the Paradise Snare, and I highly, highly recommend you pick it up. Uh, so what's it about? I'm going to try to be as spoiler-free as possible here. Uh, I'm not going to give away anything huge in the book, but... Uh, Han Solo is, uh, is raised by this, uh, this guy named Garrus Shrike. And, uh, he's a guy essentially that picks up strays and, uh, raises them to be pickpockets and run these elaborate scams for him. Uh, the guy's, the guy's a big jerk. Uh, he abuses Han constantly, like beats him and, and just, he's, he's, he's a nasty, nasty guy. But, uh, Han his saving grace is uh, a Wookiee that he forms kind of a mother son relationship with. And this is a Wookiee named Dulana and uh, Dulana is essentially who, who raises him and is the only great thing in Han's life. Well, Han decides he wants to leave and start a life uh, of his own. And he ends up going to this planet uh, after escaping Garrus Shrike, he goes to this planet called uh, Elysia. Uh, where this group of aliens 
who are closely related, uh, they're a species closely related to the huts, and they're called the Talanda Till. And they're running this like religious cult there. Uh, but this religious cult, of course, is a huge sham. Uh, but Han needs experience because he wants to get into the Imperial Academy. So he goes to uh, this uh, religious cult who also are, um, their business is getting their pilgrims uh, to harvest and uh, mine spice, which is the, the main drug in Star Wars and it's highly illegal. And uh, they need Han to uh, deliver spice and do all these pilot errands for them. So Han goes to be a pilot for them. But of course, Han being the little uh, SHIT disturber that he is, uh, <laughs> decides that uh, he sees this religious cult for what it is. It's a bunch of BS and he, he doesn't like what's going on here. And of course he befriends uh, a woman in, in the book and right here, her name is Bria Theron. Uh, and he basically is trying to expose the, the, the big lie to her, uh, while also trying to get what he can out of the Talanda till these, these, these priests, I'm telling you, give me a religious cult, uh, give me, uh, you know, a thief, uh, whatever. Okay. Uh, like this, this book had everything I, 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 I loved. Okay. And you almost kind of got like this 1984 vibe from this book because Han's on this planet and you get the sense of someone's always following him. Someone's always watching him. And, uh, and that's why it's like, you got like this big brother kind of thing that's going on in this book. And it's just great. Kind of keeps you on edge. Uh, and I really won't tell you any more than that because I don't want to give you spoilers, but it is, it was just a great book. And I'm telling you, AC Crispin, uh, rest her soul. Uh, she actually passed away in uh, 2013 from, uh, I think it was a uh, bladder cancer. Uh, but, uh, she, you could tell she really had an attachment to this character. I feel that she really understood the character of Han Solo because it is, uh, you, the, how she wrote him was so believable and she did such a great job. I could picture Harrison Ford in my head doing the exact things that she describes in this book. Uh, for example, uh, there's this one scene. I'm not the type of guy that normally laughs while reading, but there was this, this scene that, uh, that had me in stitches. I was laughing so hard because I could totally see Harrison Ford in this role. Okay. So basically the Talanda till, uh, they're basically like these slug creatures, very similar to the, to the, uh, to the huts, but they have like a horn. Uh, they're taking a mud bath. Okay. And, uh, Han needs to have, uh, an audience with them. Uh, so he goes to talk to them and they invite him to come and take a mud bath with them. And, uh, and, knowing that it would be disrespectful to decline, he accepts the invita invitation. So, so he basically strips down to his boxers and jumps in and starts taking this mud bath with these slugs, but it doesn't just end there. The, the, the author describes in detail um, these, uh, these slugs, like picking them up and rubbing mud all over them and like trying to like massage. It was just hysterical and I could just, see Han Solo in, uh, in, in this type of situation. And it was just so, so funny. Uh, and th there were so many other things as well that, that were charming and really illustrated the type of character that Han Solo is just, just amazing. Uh, and I really love it. Now, the other thing I wanted to kind of mention about this book is the uh, the cover. I don't know if you can see, it's a little bit of a glare there. Uh, this, of course, is a cover by uh, Drew Struzan, uh, who is my all-time favorite Star Wars artist. Uh, he also did all of the art for all of the Star Wars movies. He did art for Back to the Future, The Green Mile. Like, he was the movie poster artist 
of the 80s and a lot of the 90s as well. Like one of the most prolific movie artists ever. And I mean, come on. I, I could totally see why. Like look how hyper realistic and gorgeous these uh, these works are. And I think he did uh, all of the covers for the the other Han Solo books as well, along with so many other uh, Legends novels. Now, one thing besides the fact of this being beautiful, obviously we know that Harrison Ford is used as a reference for Han Solo. But if, if there are any of you out there that can tell me who the reference is for the Bria, the Bria Theron character, I would really like to know that. I, I tried looking it up and I couldn't find it. Looking at her here, she gives me some Karen Allen vibes. Okay, uh, and if you don't know who Karen Allen is, she's the the actress that starred alongside. Harrison Ford in Indiana Jones and uh, and Raiders of the Lost Ark. She played Mary in Ravenwood. And uh, if 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 I find out that Karen Allen was used as reference for Bria Theron, I, th I think I'd be I'd, I'd be stoked and totally geeked out about that because I, I loved the dynamic between the two in uh, Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. And actually, throughout the whole book, when I was reading about uh, Bria Theron, I pictured a young Karen Allen in my head just because I feel that Harrison Ford and Karen Allen worked so well together in, uh, in Indiana Jones. Uh, so if you know, let me know, uh, because, uh, I think that it would be cool if he did use Karen Allen as a, as a reference here. But, uh, do I recommend this book? Yes, I, I totally do. I highly recommend you go and pick it up. There'll be a link in the description uh, for an affiliate link if you'd like to help support uh, the channel slash podcast. Uh, pick it up on Amazon. I highly recommend it. It's great. It's still published nowadays as a as a Legends novel, but honestly, I think this should be it should be canon. Uh, does it matter? No, because I mean, canon or Legends. At the end of the day, they're they're both fiction, <laughs> but. Uh, I think this is the better of the Han Solo stories. Uh, and I think it's much better than how Han Solo is described currently in canon. Again, enjoy the Han Solo movie, but uh, so much better here. And this is only the first book. I've actually moved on to the, uh, the the second installment in the Han Solo trilogy called The the Hut Gambit. And uh, so far I'm enjoying that. I'm about 60 pages in right now. So I definitely will be... Uh, discussing that that book in, in, in the near future, for sure. As well as the third one, because I will move on to uh, the third book in the in the trilogy as well. And then I might even just talk about the, the trilogy as a whole and how it stands as a trilogy. But this is definitely, I think, something maybe that Disney <laughs> wants you to forget because... It's just so much better than than the Han Solo story that they put forth. Uh, and a little bit more believable as well. I mean, even even the the backstory uh, about Han's origins, how he became an orphan, it's explored a little bit in this novel, but you don't know for sure. So it's open open to interpretation, and you can theorize. Now, I don't know if it's if it's uh, revealed what exactly happened uh, and who his parents were, so on and so forth in, in the further novels, but uh, it's great to theorize. I, I don't think that in, that wasn't really the case in the Han Solo movie. Just so much better, so much better here with, uh, with the Paradise Snare and the Han Solo trilogy and definitely so far uh, one of my favorite Legends books. Uh, if you've been watching the channel for a while, uh, you would know that I've, for the past few years, two years, I think it's been, uh, I've been kind of on this ride of trying to read as many Star Wars canon and Legends novels as I can, uh, because they're just, they're, they're great. 
So that about does it uh, for our episode today. Have you read The Paradise Snare? If you have, I would love to hear from you either in the comments on YouTube or on social media uh, or in the podcast. Uh, I always love engaging with you. But for me, this was just a great, perfect book. Don't think it could have been any better. So that about does it for our video today, for our episode today. Really hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode.